NSFW pre-internet redditors, what did you masturbate to? My brother was a trash picker. He'd go out early on trash day and find whatever cool stuff there was. A TV that needed a new antenna. Stuff like that. There was a doctor on our block who was single. Never married. One day about 6 months after the doctor moved in. My brother found several large trash bags in his trash. It was all porn. Some was pretty kinky. That's how I learned what an enema was. Anyway, every 6 months or so, the doc trashed a boatload of porn. We were the beneficiaries. The internet would have been more convenient. So much medical waste to consume. So little time. Has probably got his by hazard all over it. Late night TV shows like you're a trash. Music videos. Sex scenes in movies you had on VHS. Porno you found somehow cause it literally existed in physical form. And memories of those things or sexual things you did in your own life. Spanked to Terminator. Dances with wolves. That chic bending over in National Lampoon summer vacation pool scene. Christy Brinkley. She's still looking good too. Scrambled Playboy channel. Sometimes it had audio. Sometimes it didn't. If it had audio. It was much easier to work with. With our cable boxes we could quickly switch the channel between Spice and a random unassigned channel. Like 105. For example. Back and forth using the last button on the remote. And after about 20 tries the signal would unscramble for around 30 seconds. You let those 30 seconds burn into your memory. Then use the light to see the dawn. In the early days of UK satellite they only scrambled the video half the time. So you had a few seconds clear and a few seconds scrambled. But the audio continued on. I watched not only porn, but so many premium movies that way. You see the characters and settings enough to follow the story. But when I see one of those films again now my brain keeps telling me something is missing. In the UK you would find porn in the woods. Obviously brought by other people. Seriously. Ask anyone 35 plus and know about porn in the woods. In Hong Kong, you could buy porn if you were confident enough. But I went to construction sites and broke their locks and took their porn. Edit, clothing catalogs the bra section. Cutting out hot pics from magazines. I can't imagine having to resort to breaking and entering for porn. Lol. We all make mistakes in the passion of heat. Porn mags found in woods and under hedges. Or videos which had been copied so many times you could barely see what was going on. This is so fascinating to me. I've heard so many people talk about forest porn. I grew up just in time for the internet. But the forest seems like the most random place to stash porn. I found forest porn just last month. Don't stop believing. Historical romances and some other erotic books I found in the basement. Romance novels are basically socially acceptable lady porn. Back when I was dating, and we'd talk about reading guys would always be like, I can't believe you read romance novels. You must be dumb. And I was like, I can get that shit at borders and the only reason their counter could be sticky is, if someone dropped their frappuccino. So who's the dumb one here? As a guy I like the occasional romance novel. I'll admit that it's usually on the trashier side. But I actually get more turned on when there's a decent story. With a reason the couple actually like each other. Not just oh hey the pizza guy is kinda cute. I guess I'll give him a big tip. Apostrophe. Old issues of National Geographic. Good old tribal titties. Those were the days. Or animals mating. You had to remember that one girl's boobs from that one time. GD focus was required of course. The force can be used in ways that some people think are unnatural. Hey I still do that. My ex had some good tits. Yup I feel that. Sears catalog. You'll know what I'm saying. Underwear section of that mart catalog always did the trick back in the day lol. Ah yes. The peach colored underwear and Ed look in the eyes of models used to rock my world. See now you kids. Don't know the sheer terror of being a teenager. Having to walk into your local mom and pop pharmacy. And buying dirty magazines. But testosterone overpowers your fear. I used to drive at 16 to places like 10 miles away from my home for fear of a neighbor spotting me. I would load up on the usual. Like Playboy. Penthouse. 
hustler and AUI. One time I went into a mom and pop pharmacy that I never been to before. I did my usual fake shopping. Would walk around, look at talc powder or band-aids. Wait until the coast seemed clear. I'd grab the magazines. Make a quick dash to the counter. Hoping I could be ringed up and out of the store quickly. The person working the cash register was at least 80 years old. She would look at the magazines and ring. Each. One. Up. Very. Slowly. Eventually a line started to form behind me. I felt the sweat rise on the back of my neck. Because everyone was just watching the slow ringing of each magazine. The slow bagging of each magazine. It was like a nightmare realized. The humiliation of me. A pimply faced 16 year old and the people just standing there as I get my spank bank material for the next month. I couldn't run out of the store fast enough after I paid my bill. Never went back there again. You all have it easy. You absolutely know Nana did that shit on purpose. She told her entire bridge club about it the next week. Mental images of the girls I went to high school with. I'm very good at using my imagination too. I guess using your imagination was much more important before the internet though. I had like 100s of stories mapped out. With the teachers. The girls I liked. And other imaginary women. 60 minute VHS. And halfway through the middle it was taped over with the original Mario Kart for about 20 minutes. They did have a pretty good run though. Fast times. I also enjoy some sexy investigative journalism. Cave paintings. Man. The way they speared that wooly mammoth. HNNNG. Makes my trunk super hard. I used four thumbtacks and took cut rubber bands. The thick long ones from newspaper bundles. I had a root. I tacked each end of the rubber bands to the four corners under the bathroom drawer in an X shape. I stuffed a fresh copy of the 1994 Sports Illustrated Swimsuits edition between the rubber bands and the underside of the drawer. It didn't stay fresh for long. That shit looked like an abstract paper mash sculpture of an explosion by the time I was tired of it. We boys are sure dumb f when it comes to school, but goddamn we are some badass engineers if it gets us a nut. That's better than my brother. He found some kind of Riske magazine. I don't remember what it was. And he wasn't nearly as creative about hiding it. He hid it inside the toilet water tank. The toilet malfunctioned almost immediately, and he got into a lot of embarrassing trouble from the landlord. It was funny to me at the time, but he's decades older now and still very afraid of making similar mistakes, and has anxiety about anything to with porn or nudity or sex. He's regarded his feelings and body functions as defects, and hates all of it. All he had was a natural and normal desire, and it turned into a nightmare. It's just very sad. Edit. Typo. That's depressing. Hopefully one day he'll be able to laugh about it. Too. Rose's hand on the steamy windshield. Lara Croft. PS1. And basically anything with Jennifer Love Hewitt. Not kink shaming or anything. Just curious. Why exactly did Rose's hand on the windshield do it for you when that same movie features her jiggly jugs? This was VHS. Not DVD. If you always go to the nude scene, you'll wear out the tape, and it will be obvious next time someone watches it. I made that mistake with the Maid Marian bath scene in Robin Hood, Men in Tights. You have to mix it up a bit. Also, there's a scene in the original version of Star Wars, Return of the GD where Jabba feeds a dancer to the anchor As she falls into the trapdoor, one of her breasts falls out of her costume for a few frames. That's not in the remastered version, though. So most likely you'll never see it. When I was a kid, I would steal adult magazines from Hudson News stands. Rags like Playboy and Hustler were expensive. Standalone magazines. But magazines like Busty, Cherry, XL, Blacktail, Voluptuous, and others were not only cheaper, but they were bundled together in plastic wrap with two, sometimes three other magazines. Two of those plastic wrapped bundles discreetly tucked under my shirt and stuffed into my pants. And I was set for months. I like how you were concerned about which one was cheaper, even though you were stealing. 
there were the occasional days when I actually had some money, usually from playing CeeLo during lunch. And $10 seemed like a sound investment in a trio of magazines that had not only pictures, but also stories. I think what surprised me the most was that A-list magazines like Playboy had several different short spreads of several different mostly boring models. But every other page was either an advertisement or an advertisement dressed up as an article. In those other magazines, a majority of the pages had pictures of naked women. And any articles were either letters or stories. So, in that regard, those publications were maximizing their space with some type boner content. Mental image of my perfect type. Having a vivid imagination really helps in this case. Forest porn. How is that an actual thing? I don't get it. Stas's mom. Man. She's got it going on. She's all that I want. There was an unwritten rule between the people who bought magazines and the people who couldn't or were too afraid. Once you were done with the magazine you left it at the train station or bus stop. Jeez. Thanks for the awards. Kind redditors. Reading through the comment chain has me feeling nostalgic now. As someone once said nostalgia is heroin for the old. I wasn't expecting a throwaway memory from childhood to impact my day so much, and it's nice to see the nostalgia and humanity in everyone in the chain. Peace and love. Or strangely in the nearest heavily wooded area. Or bamboo forest. Was forest porn where I'm from too. Or hedgerows by the road. Pretty sure I was about 13 the first time I saw porn. Acquired from a hedge on the road near my house. Thinking about it, it was super ducking weird but teenage me never questioned that porn grew on trees. HBO Red Shoe Diaries and Real Sex plus Skinamax. Real sex was the shit. It was more educational than it was sexy though. Taxi cab confessions occasionally had some decent stuff though. I was coming to fruition just before the WWW was really up and going. We used to call one eight double zero sex lines and give them our address and they'd send little porn magazines with a bunch of phone sex ads. Me and my brother got the mail every day. So we intercepted most of them and gave some to our buddies. One kid got busted w slash one at school and got suspended. We were the porno plug for our school. Yes, this. I had a roommate who called a 1-800 spankid hash and he wound up on the mailing list for these free BT's magazines. He moved out. The mags kept coming. And so did. What? So did what? I spliced each side of some of that flat antenna wire to the insides of the coax cable, from the box to the TV, and wrapped it in balls of foil sliders that I would use to tune out scramble in the scrambled channels. So, in answer to your question. Cinemax every Wednesday night. You could count on catching some partially descrambled soft core porn and wank like a dirty little troll. So how did you end up becoming an RF engineer? Oh you know. Back in the day learning how to fix up a TV antenna was the only way we could jerk off. Mostly Sears bathing suits or underwear. But when we got the stray Fredericks of Hollywood catalog. Holy shit. Fredericks of Hollywood was like the kinky version of Victoria's Secret. I remember the first time I saw one I thought those women must be so dirty. Now you see that shit on Instagram and it's the college kid from down the street. This will be buried. But my grandfather died and my family went to clear out his house. I was about 12 and I found his stash of 1960s playboys. I made the duck sure I smuggled them out in secret. Let's just say I got so bored with those magazines I really started reading the articles. Anything interesting that you remember? Spank Bank. Skin Mags. Late night TV and movies. Our VHS could record a static cable channel while the screen was displaying what the remote was flipping. So I used to record a movie channel that had erotic films late at night while my parents were watching other things. I don't think there's a big market for softcore erotic nowadays. Porn has gotten too oddly specific. Like what happened to leaving law for the imagination. The late night girls gone wild infomercials. Warning warning warning. VHS and magazines. We were classy and had our porn on Botanax. An extra curvy piece of wood. 
Driftwood. The girl's boobs in Spanish class in middle school. Let me catch a glimpse of those warlocks. I had a classmate with huge knockers who back then looked like Angelina Jolie to me. In reality she really didn't carrot carrot. So I imagined her in this tight Tomb Raider outfit. Damn. Just my imagination and fantasies. Even with all the extra options available now, this is still the best choice. Amen. Sears catalogs. Right. Apparently everyone else in this thread had access to actual porn magazines. I had an ad for Perfect Dark Zero or Tomb Raider in Officials Barks magazine to work with, or had to hope there was a photo of a female in that month's men's health. Close saint I ever got to a real Playboy type mag was a Maxim or two, which were infinitely better than the cartoon side boob of OXM and the fully clothed women in men's health. Thankfully the internet kicked in around that time for me. When I was about 15 we moved to a house with a satellite dish, like one of those huge ones. My parents didn't want to pay for channels, so we only got the free ones. But the porn channels came in scrambled. I figured out that, if you toggle volume up slash volume down at the right speed, you could make out the picture. I had a TV in my room. But the danger factor was, that every TV in the house, would show the same image, because there was only one box. You just had to work those volume buttons and pray that nobody woke up and turned on a TV. I don't think jerking off to porn doesn't get more uphill both ways than that. Cinemax late night. Cinemax would show softcore porn after midnight. A sports channel here would show sexy sport clips late at night, which were like 15 minute videos of girls stripping and dancing. While nobody really wants to admit fapping to those everyone seems to know about them for a miraculous reason carrot carrot. I was a teenager, so a quick wank came naturally. One of my finest was the neighbor's birch tree hoss branches and salouette to my imagination. Looked like a woman. Hey, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.